Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, well, today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners, and I want to say a special thank you to Lisa and to Sandra. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Lineup, The Mad Bomber. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is... The lineup. Tonight, the lineup is presented by your nearby Plymouth dealer. Saturday, he presents the most exciting Plymouth ever built. Before we join the lineup, Let's eavesdrop on one end of a telephone conversation. Hello, Chief. Ryan talking. Yeah, yeah. Who did it? Plymouth did it. Turned out the car sensation of the year. Can't get you the whole lowdown yet, but Saturday's the big day. Yeah, they'll crack it then. The whole mystery surrounding the new Plymouth. Everybody's going to know on Saturday. What's that? Clues. Well, sure, a couple of swell leads. For one thing, the new Plymouth has safety flow ride. Now, take it from me, Chief. That is one terrific story. Those Plymouth engineers have come up with a tremendous development. Hmm? Oh, no, no. Not just the kind of improvement you expect in any new model. This is a sensational new idea. And get this payoff. The new Plymouth skims over bumps and holes like it was floating. Takes the bounce and wallop out of those rough roads so you swear you were gliding down a superhighway and... Hmm? Oh, oh, Chief, got to cut this off. But remember that lead, New Plymouth with Safety Flow Ride this coming Saturday. Yeah, Chief, I'll keep on it. And we can sit right here, Mr. Hunter. How many men would we look at? Well, 31 altogether. Now, a man probably won't be any of these, but we want to cover every possibility. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identification... Please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identification, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. Bring on the line. Okay, men, move on up to the end of the stage. Right up to the end. That's right. Now turn and face front, hands to your sides, look straight ahead. Now when I ask you questions, talk up so the people in the back can hear you. Okay. Number one, Bertram Ketchell, robbery. What do you live, Bert? Fremont Hotel. Talk up, Rick. Talk up. It's a long way to the back of the room. The people back there want to hear you, too. Fremont Hotel. What's the address? 634 East 109th. Where are you from, Bert? Oklahoma. Where in Oklahoma? Yeah. Can you people back there hear him? I, I am, Roy. Uh, you have to be 
be louder. Yeah, there. no. Yeah. You'll have to be louder. McAllister. Anyone arrested with you? Yes, sir. Who? A fellow named Al. Al Kingston? I guess so. I didn't know his last name. Kingston. He's uh, number 28. He's in the other room. Did you have a car? No, sir. Any weapons? No, sir. How long had you known Kingston? About 30 minutes. Mm. <laughs> number two, John Mathy, robbery. Face front and talk up. Where do you live, John? 66 and River Street. What's that? Uh, Siemens Hotel. Don't look at me, John. Look right out front so the people can see you. Uh, what do you do, John? Ship's cook. Anybody arrested with you? No. Any weapons? Yes, sir. Pistol, wasn't it? Yes, sir. What kind of a pistol? Uh, 32, I think. 38, I know. Yes, sir. Do you have a car? Yeah, Chrysler. Well, sedan, coupe, or what? Sedan. What color? Black. Number three, Lewis Moore, assault. Where do you live, Lewis? 205 South Maple. You can't hear him, man. 205 South Maple Drive. Oh, look, look, I don't want to tell you boys again. It's a long way to the back of the room, so you got to talk up. Where do you work, Lou? Fisher and Son. What do you do? What's your work? Cotton. Your landlady says you hit her. Yes, sir. With what? A hot what? plate. Something you cook on? Yes, sir. I was cooking. She said I was smelling up the building. Why did you hit her? It's a long story, Sergeant. You'd have to know my landlady. Number four, Ivan Cyberling, drunk and disorderly. Any of these men, Mr. Hunter? Where do you nope. live, Ivan? I leave Lake Park, 644 North Hudson Place, Sergeant. Don't, don't tell me. Tell the people out there. What do you do, Ivan? Construction engineer. You were pretty drunk, Ivan. Yes, sir. The arresting officer said he had had complaints before. Yes, sir. She has complained for a week. Who's she? My wife. You live at 644 North Hudson? Yes, sir. The report says you broke a window at that address. The door was locked. I broke one other night, too, when she locked me out. I will keep right on breaking them until she leaves door unlocked. Maybe you better stop drinking. Yes, sir. Any questions or identification? How about it, Mr. Hunter? Number two was picked up in your neighborhood. No. Any questions or identification? Okay, we'll look at the please. next bunch. Uh, nothing, man. Okay. Run them off. Bring on the next line. <laughs> Coffee, Mr. Hunter? Thank you. They won't keep you much longer. There you are. Thanks. Sergeant Greb should be here any minute. Ah, uh, hi. Uh, this is Mr. Hunter, Matt. Sergeant Greb. Well, how do you do, Mr. Hunter? Grab a chair, man. I uh, voted for you last election, Mr. Hunter. Yeah, good. Didn't spot anybody in the line? No. Coffee, man? No, no, thanks. Mr. Hunter can't think of anyone who'd want to kill him. And you can't remember seeing anybody suspicious hanging around your house? No, I can't, Sergeant. Well, none of your neighbors saw anybody either. Hey, here's the report from the lab. Bomb was a time bomb, found pieces of an old alarm clock. And the size of the explosion must have been about eight or ten sticks of dynamite. Oh, sure lucky you and the family were in the back of the house. Very lucky. Well, we'll do our best to catch whoever it was, sir. Eh, probably just a crank. Man like myself, politics, public figure, makes a lot of enemies for one reason or another. Maybe this one didn't vote for me last election, Sergeant. Well, come to think of it, maybe he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, we may want to talk to you again, Mr. Hunter, in case we come up with something. Well, my family and I are going to stay over at my mother's until the house is fixed. The address is uh, Lakeshore Drive, number 10. Number 10, Lakeshore Drive. Mm-hmm. Phone numbers, OQ, 77687. 77687. Pardon me. Guthrie. Yeah? Oh, yeah? How long ago? Was anyone hurt? Right. Sure. Another bombing. What? Hmm? A friend of yours. Councilman Adams. W- was he hurt? Yeah. Both he and his wife are in the hospital. They've got a child. Well, the child's all right. Ruined the house, though. Well, were Adams and his wife hurt badly? Well, I don't know. Ambulance took them away. I'll have to check with the hospital. This is awful. Everybody should certainly be warned. Yeah, they will be. We'll put a man with you and your family, Mr. Hunter. In the meanwhile, we'll go and look at Mr. Adams' house. <laughs> There's Twine. I got a man over here. Maybe he saw the guy who planted the bomb. Well, 
Well, let's go talk to him. Uh, go over and talk to Chief Anderson, Matt. See what he's got to say about the damage. Yeah, sure. The man's a neighbor. Named Crump. Mr. Crump! Yes, Sergeant. This is Lieutenant Guthrie. How are you, Mr. Crump? Glad to meet you, Lieutenant. Uh, let's move over here where we can talk, huh? Tell the lieutenant right. just what you told me, Mr. Crump. Well, about 4.30, I was working in my backyard, mowing the lawn. I saw Mrs. Adams get in her car and drive out of the garage. About an hour later, I went around front to get the hose, and I saw an old truck pull up across the street, right over there by a lamppost. I see. I saw a man get out, kind of an old man, old clothes. Uh-huh. Went around the back of the truck and took out something that looked like a box about, about this big. I disconnected the hose and started around back. I noticed this man walking across the street with a box. Looked like he was heading for the Adams house. A couple of hours later, I was sitting in my living room, and I saw Mr. and Mrs. Adams pull up in front of the house and go in. A little while later, my wife and I were having dinner, and an explosion happened. Busted most of the windows in our house. I didn't think about the old guy with the box until I found out what had happened, and I remembered reading about this other bombing yesterday. I figured that box the old guy was carrying might have been the bomb. Well, can you remember what this old guy looked like? Well, maybe if I saw him again. And what kind of a truck was he driving? A real okay, old, take real it away, Bob. jalopy. You know, on those pickups. Uh-huh. Uh, did you get the license? No. Why would I get it? I didn't even think anything about it until after the explosion. Oh, I see. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the old guy? Well, he wore dirty coveralls and a leather jacket, if I remember right. Uh-huh. He didn't have a hat. Remember, he looked like he needed a haircut. And partly how I told he was old. He had gray hair, almost white. Mm-hmm. Coveralls and the jacket, they were pretty dirty. But if you saw him again, you think you might recognize him, huh? Yeah, I think so. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Crump. We'll keep in touch with you. Sure, glad uh, to have you. get Mr. Crump's phone number and anything we might need. Right. I'll be up with man. Okay, Lieutenant. Hello, oh, Ben. Yeah. Hello, Chief. Oh, hello, Guthrie. Been a mess, huh? Uh, bomb do all that? Bomb and the fire. Uh, he used more dynamite than the last time. Blew this room sky high. Yeah. Hey, watch out for that glass there. Right. Center of the explosion was right about here. Uh-huh. Probably walked up to the side of the house, stuck the bomb into that opening on the foundation there. I'm surprised nobody saw him. Well, somebody thinks he did. Well, you better catch this boy. He hasn't killed anybody yet, but he's trying pretty hard. How'd you make out with Crump? Oh, nothing. He looked through the whole mug file, not a thing. Mm. I talked to the hospital this morning. Adams are going to be all right. No luck on that old pickup truck? Uh-uh. Say, well, why don't you turn up the heat, man? Huh? Okay, sure. I'll, uh, I'll bet we get a blizzard. We do, you know. You got three? Yeah. Well, what was he wearing? Yeah, that sounds like him. Yeah, we'll be right down. Well, maybe we got the bomber. Yeah? 25 minutes ago, picked up a man wearing old coveralls and a dirty leather jacket coming out of the state building. They spotted him, followed him three blocks before they grabbed him. He's climbing into an old pickup truck and back with 30 sticks of dynamite. That man? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got Crump sitting out front. How many men are you going to show? Three beside the suspect. Okay, I'll go sit with Crump. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Crump. Hello. Oh, Lieutenant Guthrie, I couldn't see. We want you to look at some suspects. Yeah, that's what Sergeant Greb told me. We think one of them might be the man who planted the bombs. I hope I can help you. Yeah, I hope so. All right, Ben, run them on. Right, right. Okay, men, move out on the stage. Stand in the line, face front. They've all got on coveralls and leather jacket. Yeah, take a good look. The man on the end, Lieutenant. Now, what about him? That's the man, no doubt about it. I remember better than I thought I would. He's the one that got out of the truck, all right? The one with the box. All right, Matt, run him off. Right. 
That's all, man. That's all. Bye, all. Well, I think you picked the right one. That's the man I saw in front of my house. We'll need a statement from you, Mr. Crump. Sure, sure. Well, what were the others arrested for? They weren't arrested, Mr. Crump. The three others were police officers. <laughs> Do you drive a car? Do you ride in one? If so, you've got a brand new experience in store for you. Plymouth Spectacular Safety Flow Ride. A sensational new use of hydraulic principles that gives you a smooth ride on any kind of road. Yes, even those dirt roads outside of town and the worn pavement you've been avoiding because of the bumps. Drive a new Plymouth over stretches like that and you won't believe your senses. Front seat or back, you'd think you were traveling a smooth, paved highway. But don't take my word for it. Prove it to yourself Saturday at your nearby Plymouth dealers. Arrange for your ride in the most exciting Plymouth ever built. He's going to be a tough nut. Arresting officers couldn't get a thing out of him. We've got men over there talking with people in the state building. So far, nobody remembers seeing him come in. You say his name is Louis Black, huh? Yeah, yeah. Driver's license gave his address as 1910 East Flower. Asher's over there now checking. Wonder what he was doing in the state building. Yeah, I'm worried, too. I wonder if... Oh, no, no. No, he couldn't have. Mm, big building. I hope you're right. Hello, Mr. Black. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Graham. Quine. Yeah. I'll see you upstairs. Right. Well, sit down, Lewis. We want to talk to you about those bombings. We know you made those bombs. A man saw you walk up to the Adams house with one of them. <clears throat> She's cold in here. Yeah, yeah. It started to snow. That's right. That's right. Now, look, um, why don't you tell us about it? Oh, I made him. Oh, yeah, sure. Why? I made him. I don't have to tell you why, though. You put one of them under George Hunter's house. Do you know him? I know who he is. But you don't know him personally? No. Nope. Did you know Adams? No. Nope. Then why'd you try to kill him? And I've been out of work. Isn't there a heater in here or something? You've been out of work long? Yes, I have. Hunter or Adams have something to do with it? You sure want to know why I made those bombs, don't you? Well, he'd like to know. Well, it's no fun being out of work. I've been out of work for a long time. You ever been out of work? Yeah? Yeah, well, you know, it's no fun. You try to get a job? Sure, I couldn't get one, though. I kept trying, just couldn't get one. Look, do we have to sit in here? It's really getting cold. We'll get out of here as soon as you tell us all now, about don't it. don't try to push me. I don't like being pushed around. I can stand it down here as long as you can. We're not trying to push you. No? We don't like this any better than you do. It's just a job. If it weren't us, it'd be somebody else. Okay. If you had a job, you'd try to do it the best you could, wouldn't you? Well, sure I would. I used to have jobs all the time. I always did the best I could. And what kind of jobs did you have? All course? kinds. I was a minor once when I worked in Pennsylvania. That's where you're from, Lewis? Pennsylvania? Yeah, I did all kinds of jobs once. Then I couldn't get a job. Nobody would give me one. That's the trouble. There's not enough jobs. They ought to do something about getting jobs for people. Bunch of dirty politicians. They don't worry about guys like me. No, they make speeches. Oh, sure, they get elected. They don't do nothing. Like Adams and Hunter. You're darn right. Adams and Hunter, the whole bunch. Even the mayor. Sure, the mayor. Yeah. And the governor. Oh, he's the worst one of all. He's the biggest. Well, he could do something if he wanted to, and he'd done. He'd had a job in three years. You'd like to take care of the governor like Adams and Hunter, wouldn't you? Oh, no. no. I'm not going to tell you anything. You think I'm going to tell you something, don't you? <laughs> but I'm not. What were you doing in the state building? Why don't you try and find out? Look, Lois. We don't want you to get into any more trouble than you're already in. I don't want to talk anymore. I want to go back to my cell. I'm cool. You can go back to your cell as soon as you tell us all about it. Yeah. Lieutenant. Can I see you a minute? Uh, yeah, yeah fine. Have some heat in well, here. Well, it's up to you. All you have to... We've got a janitor upstairs from the state building. He remembers seeing Louis Black come into the building by the side entrance. He says Black was carrying a big box. Hold. Oh, look. See that the state building's cleared as fast as possible. Rope off the street. Step on it. Right. Lewis, I just found out that you planted a bomb in the state building. I don't care what you found out. I'm not going to tell you. I'm tired of playing with you, Lewis. 
Now, where's that bomb? Where'd you put it? Oh, you can do anything you want to me. Go on, get rough, beat me up. I won't tell you where I put that bomb. Well, at least tell us when it's set to go off. What time is it? Six minutes to five. (laughs) You won't find it. How much time? Oh, about 40 minutes, I guess. No, he wants it to go off. We got him over in the car with Waldo and Asher. They'll keep working on him. Army car. Captain Phillips, demolition expert. I'm Phillips. Ben Guthrie. Hope we can use you. Know what kind of a bomb it is? Uh, Quine will tell you all we know. We've got to get into that building and try to find it. Thirty men in there now, covering every floor. Uh, who's in charge? Harrison. He's in the basement. Come on, ma'am. Right. What time is it? Well, we got about 25 minutes, more or less. Any luck? Oh, not yet, Lieutenant. Harrison's still in the basement? Yeah, down those stairs. Okay. Harrison! Over here, Ben. Well, any luck? No. How much time we got? Uh, Less than 25 minutes. What orders did you give? If the bomb's found, it's to be taken directly to the street. If we've still got any time left, a car will drive it to a safe place. That army man get here? Yeah, yeah, he's here. Well, this is the way I want it to go. It's uh, 5.13 by my watch. Set yours. Right. At exactly 5.25, order your men out of here. Tell them they've got 10 minutes to get clear. We'll go tell the rest on the other floors. <clears throat> Can you run an elevator, man? Yeah, sure. Well, take the second floor. I'll take the alternates, third, fifth, and so on. Be sure they set their watches with yours. Right. right. Sergeant. Yes, sir. You got a watch? Yes, sir. I'll set it with mine. Yes, sir. In five seconds, it'll be 5 14 Now. Yeah. Have all your men off this phone by 5 25. Yes, sir. Ben, it's 525, everybody's out. Yeah. Well, what do we do? That's a good question. If Black wasn't lying, we've got something like ten minutes. Matt. Yeah? Go out to the car and get Black. Huh? Go out and get Black. Maybe the last thing I do, but I'm going to find out where that bomb is. All right, get out of here, man. What? Get out of here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you find out where that bomb is, who's going to watch Black while you get it? I'll worry about that when I get to it. No, no, I'm staying. Okay, I can't argue. How about it, Black? You want to tell us where it is? You'll never find it. What time is it? 5.28. Oh, you can't scare me. You think if you keep me here, I'll tell you where the bomb is, huh? About five minutes, huh? Huh? I guess so. Yeah, not very smart. I said 40 minutes. Well, maybe 40, maybe not. I can't be sure. <laughs> Might go off any second. I guess so. Ah, who are you kidding? You won't stay in here. You're scared. Listen, Black. You're darn right we're scared. But to help me, you're going to tell us where that bomb is, or it's going to blow all of us sky high. Now, shut up unless you want to tell us. Hey, I'm not afraid to die. Well, you're going to have a chance. Eight stories in this building. Yeah. If it's too far away... We may not have time anyway. Let me out of here. You're not going anywhere. You're going to stay right here until you tell us where it is. I won't tell you. I won't. Well, then shut up. 5.29. Look. Look, Black. You're not doing anything but wrecking a building and killing yourself. You can't get the governor. He's been taken out. You can't make me tell you. Okay. How much dynamite is in that bomb, Louie? Fifty sticks. Hope you guessed right about the time. Ben. Yeah? I told you it would snow. 
Yeah. Gonna be a big one. Lewis, why don't you tell us? I can stand it if you can. 5.30. All right, all right, all right. It's in the basement. Well, show us. All right. Come on, step on it. Come on. Time is there. Not much. Can you stop it? Yes. All right, now where, where? It's up there. On top of the big pipe, in the back. How did you get up there? Where's the ladder? Where's the ladder? Everything's been moved. Well, forget the ladder. Show us the spot. Yes. It's right about here. All right, give him a boost up. Yeah. Put your foot in my hand. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Supposed it goes off. I'm scared. No wonder we couldn't find it. You see it? Yes. It's... Well, I can grab it. God, I... I've got it. All right, now hand it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, let it go off. We might not have time to... Well, can I... Can I tear off these boards without something... Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Well, explain it to me while I rip them off, will you? Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Please, yeah, please. You, want get out of here. Alive. you better remember. Oh, it's oh. dynamite. Old alarm clock. Batteries. Breaker switch. The alarm goes off. It causes a circuit in the batteries. Okay. Take it apart. No, let me out of here. You're going to stay right It'll here. Blow us all now, settle down. Come on, uh, Tell me, tell me what to do. The wires and the batteries and the dynamite, pull them loose. Please? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. You sure that does it? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's get it out to the street. Can you make it all right, Ben? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, Lewis. Come on. What's that? What is it? That's the alarm clock. Those wires were connected as well. Ben. Ben, I may be late to the station in the morning. I'm going to take my alarm clock and throw it as far as I can. moment, let's listen in again to our friend who's been investigating the new Plymouth. Hello, Chief. Ryan again. Dug up some more for you on the new Plymouth. Safety flow ride? Oh, sure. That's the big news, like I said. Smooths out bumps and dips just as if they weren't there. Oh, brother, you never saw anything like that before on any car at any price. But get this. Plymouth has a new look, too. Sleek, flowing lines. I'm sorry I can't get the whole pitch on the other important new features, but honest, Chief... They've got that new Plymouth wrapped up tighter than a mummy, keeping it strictly sewed up until Saturday. But I can tell you this much. The new Plymouth is a real beauty, inside and out. What's that, Chief? Oh, no, no, you can't. Not till Saturday. That's the big day. Then everybody and his brother gets a chance to see the new Plymouth in person. And if you want a tip from yours truly, hustle on into your neighborhood Plymouth dealers Saturday. Feast your eyes on the biggest value car in the low-priced field, the sensational new Plymouth. The lineup, or before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Grant, Sergeant Matt Grant. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then they will charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Grebb, is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were John McIntyre, Clayton Post, Sidney Miller, Ed Begley, Joe Duvall, Raymond Burr, and Howard McNear. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The lineup was brought to you by your Plymouth dealer. Remember, you have a date Saturday at his Plymouth showroom to see the most exciting Plymouth ever built. Saturday's the day, Plymouth's the car.
Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS The Stars Address, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, I have to say, um, this episode draws uh, to my mind, you know, once again, another Dragnet comparison to the Dragnet episode, The Human Bomb. This one kind of escalated the danger and risk with a time bomb that was going off as opposed to the Dragnet story, which had somebody controlling a bomb in their hand. I, I have to wonder about the risk they took here, because it seems like Guthrie and Grebs uh, risked their lives on the basis of he couldn't really be that crazy, hoping that the uh, who planted the bomb wasn't nutty to enough to be willing to go off with it. Though I suppose it's possible they could have gone ahead and made a quick exit if they uh, found out, yes, indeed, he is that crazy. Thankfully for them, he wasn't. Also good to see uh, corporate sponsorship and an interesting, albeit slightly cheesy, attempt to make the ads for the new Chevrolet fit into the theme of the show. All right, well, we turn now to listener comment and feedback, and uh, we start off with uh, Lisa... Who, uh, who comments, I'm, cr hi Adam, I'm currently working through, uh, Johnny Dollar and finished up Candy Matson a while ago. I really enjoy your comments, and now when I listen to other podcasts that don't have comments, I miss it. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Lisa. And we, uh, and Lisa, as I mentioned at the start of the show, is one of those who, uh, contributed to the show. Sandra also was, and she says, thanks for all the podcasts and observations you have on old on OTR. Well, thank you so much for your comments and your support. Now we move on to some other listener comments. Mark uh, comments, in the Jersey Parallel episode, they had the psycho killer cornered at the boarding house. While the policeman was talking to the landlady, you could hear the whistler playing in on the radio in the background. Is the whistler a possibility of a future great detective's time slot? The theme whistle is an eerie, haunting uh, theme piece. Um, awesome sauce from uh, Sparky in uh, Pacific Beach, California. Um, well, I'll tell you uh, the problem with the Whistler. First of all, um, I think there's a great artistic value to the Whistler. Uh, two big problems with the Whistler. Not really a detective show. Uh, second part is, while I like it in small doses, um, I can, I can kind of get to a point where I don't like walking around following a killer's point of view, um, for, uh, forever. You deal with some very disturbing heads, you know, getting inside those heads when you listen to the whistler. He, uh, comments, um, P.S. You could offer a video cam of you airing a show for deluxe membership. It would take a, um, significant contribution. To get me to consider putting up a uh, webcam. Really, I'm just a little bit self-conscious. And my area is a little crowded, cluttered, and uh, not certain I would want it featured on a, a video. Actually, I'm pretty certain I wouldn't. Keeping the it, uh, audio only, from my perspective, manages to keep your uh, existence uh, or uh, experience of the program clutter-free. Well, thanks for the suggestion. We have a comment from Kathleen on Facebook who writes, uh, regarding the last episode of uh, A Life in Your Hand, I quite enjoyed these episodes and all the ways he managed to say amicus curiae in what it was. Uh, that's very true, Kathleen. And for those members of our audience who didn't listen to A Life in Your Hands, an amicus curiae is a friend of the court representing neither prosecution nor defendant, but acting in the interest of justice. And Jonathan Cage uh, would use his powers of cross-examination to get at the truth. And thus, that's an example of how they did it on A Life in Your Hands. Two more comments from Facebook. Luis writes, uh, I love great detectives of old-time radio. We never turn on the TV anymore. Thanks, Adam. And Emilio comments from down there in Boise, Idaho, USA to the world. You have a old-time uh, 
radio fan here in the city port of La Ceiba. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Republic of Honduras. Keep the uh, good old times rocking on iTunes. Love every podcast, especially Johnny Dollar. Well, then you'll definitely be liking uh, what we have coming up in just a week or so. Um, when um, after next week, we'll be looking at uh, t- three uh, days of Johnny Dollar. So be looking forward to that. All right. Well, that will do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with a special to celebrate 900 episodes. It is a very unique show, not something we typically do. As we mix two, uh, another great genre with the detective genre, and we'll see what we get. Join us tomorrow for episode 902S. And then be back here next Saturday for an, another episode of The Lineup. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives. And uh, be sure and fill out our listener survey, survey survey.greatdetectives.net. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.